The revolution has triumphed again. The words of Ecuador's outgoing president, Rafael Correa, after Ecuadorians chose former vice president and accessibility activist Lenin Moreno over right-wing banker Guillermo Lasso. And you would guess immediately, mainstream media, which have seemingly been on a mission to undermine left Latin American governments, began their one-sided criticisms of the electoral process, like the Washington Post, which focused on the belief of supporters of right-wing loser and former banker Guillermo Lasso that the election was rigged. This is despite the fact that over 600 elections, observers, including a mission from the OAS and UNASUR, say otherwise. BBC, in its description of both candidates, painted Moreno as a stooge of President Correa, who has, quote, written books with titles such as Being Happy is Easy and Fun. A trite way to diminish Moreno's past as a motivational speaker after being paralyzed by a bullet to his spine. And then there is the Miami Herald, which published an article titled Lenin, Stalin and Hitler are alive and well in Ecuador, or at least the names are. Stupid, right? Even the New York Times describes Lenin Moreno as the candidate named for the founder of Russian communism. This is not even accounting for local private media, which are under fire for their propping up of one exit poll that incorrectly had Lasso as the winner. The fact that mainstream media go to such lengths to erase the gains of left Latin American governments and by extension propping up of their detractors and opponents does not go and see. This is also evidenced in the coverage given to Venezuela's problems compared to how news about countries with right-wing governments are framed, including the scandal-ridden coup government in Brazil, the 154 human rights activists killed in Colombia since 2016, or the massive protests against increasing poverty and unemployment in Argentina. For Ecuador, the mainstream media have glossed over the millions taken out of poverty and returned to stable government and have largely attempted to paint the citizens' revolution with a brush of populism and authoritarianism. Coincidentally, the same buzzwords that last week's revolution have trumpeted over and over. But now that Korea steps aside, how will they treat this democratically elected successor? Even most opposition people see Lenin Moreno as an honorable man, or an honorable victor, rather. When he was vice president, he began a groundbreaking program to support Ecuadorians with disabilities in education, healthcare, even job opportunities. He ran on a platform to continue reducing poverty and on providing employment through public investment, especially in affordable housing. And perhaps most importantly, at this moment, he won. Fair and square. End of story.